So we're going to do a uh, striker Mako assisted uh, unicompartment knee replacement. Here's the x-ray of the patient. As you can see, he's got medial joint space narrowing. Not complete bone on bone, but enough to warrant surgery, painful. And I've done an MRI scan on this patient just to make sure that we don't have involvement of the lateral compartment. The lateral compartment, as you can see here, is pretty, pretty good. And the patellofemoral compartment is pretty good as well. So we are going to do a, uh, uni, a unique compartment on the medial side. As you can see, it's bone and bone with bone with uh, with bone edema. So I'll take you through the planning of how we do the uni. We've done the CT scan, which is here according to the protocol that is required to plan their patient's uh, implants and where they're going to go and what. Again? Angle yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So here we are. We are going to take it for the planning. So as I mentioned before, the CT scan has been done and the CT has been uploaded to the Striker uh, software. And what we can do now is we can superimpose the uh, uh, implants onto the bone and we can see exactly where the bones are going to be positioned. So uh, he, this is Jordan. Jordan is a Striker Mako product specialist and he's going to take us through how he places the implants. So we get the raw data from the referral from Dr. Kosh and we turn it into a 3D model and we place our components or implants on the bone model and on the CT scan and we can to, to the millimeter place the implants exactly where we want them based on the patient's anatomy. So we plan in all three planes so it's very very accurate and we can see we have um, the patient's CT scan so we can pick up any anomaly or any anatomical issues that, um, that could present intra-op. So we can see here with the femur on the side view that we can follow the natural J curve of the implant and we can make, to, we can make a degree changes um, in all different directions. So, so for example if you want to change the alignment of the most proximal bit we can change it. Uh, flexion. Can you change the flexion a bit? Yeah. So you can see the implant that that's that's moving. So we are flexing the implant a bit more. But in this situation, we want to keep it about seven and a half degrees. So we'll go back to seven. And the same here. This is now in the axial plane. We're looking at how the implant is positioned onto the condyles. Can you medialize it a little bit to see how we go with that? Yeah. So all directional arrows that we can change. Okay. Good. And we can make sure we're not overhanging mm. in the notch here, so very, very safe. And we can change our rotation on the femoral implant as well to match the center of the condyle. Which we've done. Okay, go to the yeah. tibial side now. Yeah. So this is the tibia positioning. As you can see, you want to make sure that we follow the bony contour. So we're placing the implant in six degrees of varus. And we want to make sure that we have good cortical rim fit for the of the implant which looks pretty good over there and this is the posterior slope once again we're following the bony contour at a slope of five five degrees so i'm happy with the implant placement the final adjustment will be done intraoperatively when i give the computer the soft tissue uh, tension or the balance uh, when i do the stress views so we'll take you through that as well we have put the trackers on and here's the robot at the back ready to go so now we're going to register the leg onto the computer. So we'll do that now. Okay, you can see this is the registration of the femoral head center. And then we register the malleolo. Yep. Yep. Good. All right. So approach it, as you can see, this is the femoral surface, tibial surface. It's totally down to bound over here. It's worn, as you can see. So that's where the pain is coming from. Okay, good. There's um, those uh, dots on, on there. And as, as we go through over here, this is a pointer. And I'm going to pick those points on here. And we are going to capture. Go. There. 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 And there. And the same thing applies to all the points. One more again. There, 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 and there. Good. So I'm going to do that to all those points, and we'll do the same to the tibia, which I, I will show you in a second. Okay, good. There, 
that we have now registered the um, the leg onto the um, computer and it's telling us the alignment so there's a small box on the right hand side says virus is five of virus I'm in five of FFD tibial rotation of five degrees and so I'm going to move the knee to it through its range okay and I know exactly what alignment it is so it's in various about five to four, four degrees and it comes out into valgus inflection so now I'm going to give it a stress value okay capture so capture 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 okay so I've captured the point with a stress saying it goes from about five various to about two or three various and in the end it's going into a bit of valgus so we're going to try and replicate that so next screen okay so this is the planning screen we're going to look at the tracking of the femoral component those red dots there show that we are tracking really well as you can see on that on that sort of imaginary black line of this of the femoral center we're doing pretty well and in the in the um, coronal plane, once again, you can see that we are we are tracking pretty well. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to balance it. So the, the the orange means tight, and the uh, blue means loose. So on on the top. So we know we tight the, all the way through. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit more of the tibia. Can we take more of the tibia, please? Yeah, more, more, more. Good. Fantastic. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to distalize, let's go to the femoral side, and we're going to take the femur up a bit. So that one, yes. Take more of the distal femur, the other way around. Not the other way. There, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Good, okay. So the mid-flexion point, I'm just going to ignore because it, that's an aberrant registration for me with, with my stress values. I could do it again and it will change. So I'm happy with my balance at this point. Now what I'm going to do is do my anterior notch registration. Okay. I want to make sure that I am. Yep. 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 In there. Okay. Let's have a look. I want to make sure that anteriorly, as the as the uh, thema finishes the cartilage takes over so you, you can see that the write-off is pretty good okay see, see at that point I could probably ex flex the component a little bit there you go there you go that's 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 perfect over there okay so now I'm quite happy that I've got my um, knee balanced and I have uh, got the implant position where I want to position it okay Ready for the robot, here's Jordan bringing the Mako in. Initially, we're going to start off with the saw and then we'll go to the burr. So, the robot is not being, uh, the, uh, the robot is not being positioned in. Good. Okay. And I'm going to bring it into that zone. If you can look on the screen, once the robot's in the zone, it will position. Can you come here? So, look here as well. So, it's going to position me where I have to cut, and when it's in position, the, 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 the cut will cut. Dial of the filmer, but you're going to see the robot's moving it into place when it's in there. We put the burr in and register the burr, and the computer's happy. So now we are going to position our retractors, where's the big one? In here, and I'll hold on to this one. And Maddie is going to put some water. Because the burr creates a fair bit of uh, bound heat. So we're going to get, okay, so you go, it's going in place. And now you can see I'm just. So it's got a very good uh, haptic feedback 
and he can feel and he doesn't allow me to go out of the boundary, the green boundary. It will stop if I try and push it out of the boundary. So if I'm going to go out here, I can't. So I don't even have to look at the patient because I know that this drill is not going to go out of the haptic boundary that's, uh, that's there. The majority of the female now we're just doing the feel a bit and then the lug holes. We've just registered the tibia again, and we are going to do the just to get, cut the tibia off the lateral side. Red means I'm going to be deeper than I should, so I can stop. Your tongue. Mm -hmm. So I'm just removing the. Where's the female gone? Hey, this the tibia. Sorry, coca. Ah, uh, the, the tibia, and here it comes. Okay, that's the size of the tibia that I take. It's about oh, three and a half, four mils. Okay, so now the last bit of the of the um, robot is those lug holes. There you are. We're going in there and good. Next one. That's it. All the cuts for the robot have been made, and now just a matter of cementing the components. So we'll try it first, and then we'll cement it. Okay. Components in to have a look. What it looks like. There we go. Camera. Okay, let's have a look on the screen. I've got the trial in. I should be in Varus, so they got two of Varus distally, uh, sorry, in, in, in extension, two and a half, two and a half. As I go into flexion, I'm going into Varus, that's where I was before, which is quite acceptable. Okay, so this is what I wanted from five Varus in extension to about two, which is where I am at the moment. There, two, three degrees. And inflection, I'm there. Now let's look at the. Yep. 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 It's a bit tight in the inflection, but that's fine. Okay. Good surface that we've created. And I've just put the tibial component in. And here's the thermal component, which has got cement on it. And I'm just going to put it back in here like this. And it goes in, as you can see. And I will just bang it in. This cement squeezes out on the side. So I'll just clean it up, just like that. And then I will put the plastic in there. Plastic case. This is the plastic that goes in there. So I'll just stick in the middle like that. And then I'll use the little impactor. To just go conk and it's in. Alrighty. Good. Of the alignment, as you can see, at the bottom right hand side is where I'm interested in. It's various, 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 and in the end it goes in a bit of valgus, which which we need. So I'm quite happy with the outcome. And that's the knee. Thermal component with metal plastic and a titanium base plate. At the end of the operation, this is Mario, he's my fellow, and this is Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> <Stitch up. laughs>